torpid. We're live. Hey everyone, it's Walker and Scott at Full Spectrum Laser and welcome to the one hour build. Today we are doing the PC fan grades, the covers. For personal computers. Yes, the PC personal computers. There you go. Um, so, very simple file. These will go over your fan blades and uh, essentially protect them. Right. Protect your fingers protect kind your fingers. of going in there. Um, mostly for looking good. and Most of the time they're like metal wires. Right. Not too cool looking. So uh, You could put this over those existing or you could take that out. Take that off and this should mount right onto it. Now we have multiple different materials and designs to show. And I'm going to show you how to make your own design. Very good. So this week's theme was PCs all the way. Right. So we did a one hour build, uh, no, not a one hour build, e, uh, was it in the cut? Yep. We did two in the cut and we're customizing Charles, our producer's computer. All right. So we Lucky did Charles. one uh, of the side of his cases, if we want to bring up that picture. So we actually engraved, this was a very, uh, hard paint on there and we just removed the paint put one of his favorite anime guys on there and uh, just exposed that rare uh, that bare metal under that what machine did you use for that we used the 48 by 36 uh, 90 watt tube and that took about what an hour Charles yeah hour hour half and uh, surprisingly we had to go very slow that was very strong paint mm. um, and then we post process it with a light solvent cleaned up the rest of that residue that was left there. Turns out really great. And then we did the other side of his computer. We'll see if. Uh, so that is the acrylic. We replaced the acrylic with his uh, polycarbonate. He had a polycarbonate in Cover his plane. It didn't have anything etched on it. It was just very simple. And you can't etch polycarbonate, or else we would have just etched the existing one. But I had to create that whole file, and then Charles just etched on top of it with his design. Very nice. So if that hits, like the LEDs hit that edge, that acrylic, all the uh, actual engraved parts will glow like crazy. Nice. So I can't wait to see that on there, and we're going to post later a picture of his PC glowing with that design. Very good. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to design the your own uh, custom fan cover. Let's go into the software. So I just simply grab a file from online. This is my favorite superhero. An acrid guy. Yeah, arachnid guy. Not, yeah. not the uh, arachnid guy. Not the IP one. No. So this is the file you get in red and that's going to be your basic file. And what I'm going to do is simply merge this file onto that file and then create one simple laser cut right you know it's gonna do all everything at the same time yeah so union oh, selected the wrong one so th this is your uh, inkscape software you're using yeah so this is inkscape um this is what I use. You can use this and use the print driver function or save it as a PDF and just drag and drop drag. it into your, soft, into your uh, laser software. So we'll merge this guy. There very we go. Nice. That's the design. Very simple. Uh, you can just put any sort of design you want onto there and then merge it together. So it's going to cut out which parts? So it's going to cut out these negatives right here. Okay. So we will go to our document properties and resize this. And then we will save as, oh, Rack Mid Man. Did I spell that right? Ah, uh, it does. I can't see. I don't have my glasses. You can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm illiterate. So we'll save that to our desktop. This is just a, this is just the easiest way. Uh, I just save it to the desktop. I'll minimize this guy. 
You're just going to drag and drop it in there? And I'll just drag and drop it into the soft one. We are only going to import the vectors only. Right. And this is uh, RE2 you're, you're using for this? Yeah, this is RE2, and this is the last time I'm going to be showing RE2 because if you're anything like me, you're a bit stubborn when it comes to updates. You're, you're used to this software, but RE3 is significantly better. And if you have this version, you can toggle back and forth right. to RE3. But our newest version defaults to RE3, and you should get used to it because it's a lot better. It is. It's a little overwhelming at first to some, but uh, it is a lot, lot better. So now we have our design in the software. I'll just zoom in on that guy. And you can put in your, your settings. Yeah, so I know that this wood that we're going to do cuts at 20 speed, 100 power. And I'm just going to play with that current and put it at 90. Okay. See how that goes. And it'll all <coughs> be done in one pass. All one pass. Um, we're just going to run the perimeter, and if we go into the laser, we'll see that going exactly where it is in the software. Now, use the uh, camera feature to uh, to get everything aligned and focused. Yeah, we took a scrap piece of paper. Say, this is my prototype. I've never cut this design before. I literally made it right now, and I want to see if it's going to work. So I'll take a piece of wood, piece of scrap, and I'll cut it out and check my dimensions. And then you might cut it again later on a uh, acrylic or something yeah, like that. Yeah, acrylic, something of that sort. <coughs> and the best thing for pre-existing objects is your calipers. Right. You want to make those measurements and make sure they work. So we are going to just double check everything. And I'm just going to hit play. So what were your considerations when making these things as far as how much space you needed? You want enough space for air to come in so it still functions as a fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, but small enough that you don't like have fingers getting in there and stuff. Yeah, and some fans are internal and they don't really need you know, the covers on them. But they're uh, still fun. Yeah, still people put them on there. They etch the acrylic and then backlight it and it glows like crazy. Mm -hmm. It just looks cool. But you wouldn't want a, like just a raster. No, no, no. You want you want <laughs> flow. You want air flow and, yeah. and, and space between them. I'm excited to see Arachnid guy. It's gonna be a pretty cool. You can put it on your your computer. Uh, no, because I only have a laptop. Oh. <laughs> but <clears throat> there's so many applications when it comes to the laser and PCs and laptops. Uh, last week, uh, what Wednesday? Wednesday. Yep. We showed how to do laptops, you know, uh, cell phones, you can do your tablets. A lot of tablets have anodized aluminum backings and you can just engrave that stuff like crazy. If you missed that show, you can see it now on YouTube, right? On our yeah, YouTube channel. Yeah, definitely station. on YouTube yeah. if you want to check out the link that's going to be over there, right? Way over there. Um, and yeah, and I also cut this to put on top of my computer. Uh, overlay on my screen. Uh -huh. Super nerdy, but we'll see if the people can see it. Uh, did it fall off? It did. It did fall off. So, this is what it is. Size for his screen so that he has the, uh, yeah. the little silhouette there. Uh, there we go. And you can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Oh yeah. It doesn't even bother me at first. I was like, oh, that might bother me, but no. No. <laughs> see-through acrylic, uh, really thin see-through acrylic that's tinted by Roman. Came out really well. Thank you. And where are those characters from? Uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah. That was a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the old version, too. Yeah, the old one. The, the original. One. Yeah. I haven't seen the, the new one. I don't know if it's good or not. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Doesn't it have, like, Tina Fey? Does it? I think so. The more you know. <laughs> so what was the time estimate for this piece? Uh, I believe it was just over three minutes, maybe. Or that was the last one I ran. Right. Maybe. And that's that's displayed in your uh, your software. Yeah, you can hit the estimate button and it will just give you the, the they call it an estimate, but it's pretty dead on. Pretty close. And in RE3 it's automatic, you don't even have to ask for it, it's just yeah, yeah, it's just running close. there. What kind of wood are you using? This is a uh, straight maple. 
by Romark as well. Oh, it's one of those Romark products. Those are really good. Yeah, it's a really, really good wood. And I haven't seen a lot, but there are PC cases made of wood. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, people have done that. And I think they look pretty cool, especially if you mix medium with like a nice piece of wood and some white acrylic. That, that contrast really looks cool to me. I saw and on Wednesday they were they had examples of them folding acrylic as racks and stuff like that oh, as yeah, uh, yeah. design pieces and uh, one thing about acrylic is cool is that you can bend it you can heat it and bend it so you can design some sort of three dimensional file and then heat it up and bend it all into one piece. How would you heat it? Well, is there a tool for that? Or? There's actually uh, acrylic vendors is what it's called. Yeah. It's just a heat strip pretty much and just, then and you just it just flats down and yeah it, it's just literally hot along this strip and then you set it there and usually I'll vector mark it where I want it to bend and then just bend it you just physically push it down slowly and then yeah, just, yeah. It just wear bends. gloves for sure why is that it's hot it, it gets hot yeah and it retains the heat for quite a while um, you can also use a what is it a hot air gun okay and a hair dryer if you're <laughs> if you're running low on the hot air gun how would you use the hair dryer what, what kind of setup would you do uh, I would just turn it on as high as I can go and then with acrylic if you heat it up too much it will start uh, discoloring and bubbling okay so you want to keep it a far enough distance where it is still getting hot but not bubbling over acrylic will bubble it will bubble it will start bubbling and look like an ugly overheated plastic bag or something like that so Another reason to get your acrylic power settings correct. Yeah. And do it's ma material testing. Yeah. And if you have this super fine detail, like the thin uh, arachnid guy legs, then you definitely want to get your power settings for acrylic because those on either side, they'll get hot. Uh -huh. And then that real thin piece that comes in, they'll get hot on that other side and it might wave or destroy your actual okay. pile. The output's not good. I usually keep my design tight within three millimeters. Okay. So at minimum, I would do three millimeters thickness on those spider legs. Okay. And that's three millimeter material? Yeah. Uh, three, three M, it doesn't really matter thickness. I usually kind of default to keeping things, if it's a cutout, to three millimeters thick. How did you determine the, uh, the size for the uh, screw holes? The calipers, right? The handy dandy calipers. These are your best friend. Best friend, yes. Um, and basically, that's that's making sure the material is is evenly even thickness, and your your distances are all. Yeah, it's all giving you a decimal point. All the measurements I use millimeters just because it's more precise. I think in smaller mm -hmm. sizes, um, easier to work with. So in American. Yeah, I know. Metric system is better. Uh, but yeah, calipers are the best. Number one tool I think you should have, besides the laser cutter, of course. Of course. Do we have questions on Facebook? We have one from Jason. If I engrave on wood and pre-finish with poly, what would be good for a fill to make the engraving darker? I didn't mask it. Didn't mask it. That's Jason from Facebook. So you could fill those engravings with acrylic paint. So let's say you sprayed it with a uh, epoxy, was it? Spray epoxy? Oh, okay. Uh, Finished polyurethane, I'm guessing. Uh, you can actually fill that with acrylic paint. If you haven't masked it, which obviously would be the best choice because then you can just spray it. But I would do uh, acrylic paint because that's going to wipe off right from the clear coat top and then actually fill in your engraving. So we kind of have an example of how it comes out. Yeah, so just like wood, acrylic is going to etch. And if we wanted to backlight this mm -hmm. or edge light it, this design would pop right. like crazy. Um, but if you're going to fill it with paint, this was filled with black acrylic paint. So that also gives it a lot of contrast. Yeah, a lot of contrast. But you don't want it. The other side's not as great. So you want to face the design outwards right. that you're going to see. And actually, before I fill in the paint on acrylic, I hit it with the heat gun. Why is that? Because all of those little white particles and uh, dust from the acrylic actually remelts onto the actual engraving. So Does that change the? Uh, now, is this this was this uh, heated or not? 
That was not heated. That's that wasn't even cleaned. That's to show a good That's example. That's just showing it right out. Just yeah. Right out. Okay. And then this is heated, and then painted. So what would the effect be when you when you heated it up? You get a much more Very less crystally kind of. It would be clear. crusty. Yeah. Yeah, rather than white. Uh. And it really depends on your application. If you want to fill it with paint, if you want just that groove or some sort of clear, you know, ghosty look. Uh, or just the actual etch. And you just you just rub the paint on top, and then you just you just clean off the top of it. Yeah, yeah. It, if you want to see that process, we have a short video of how to do that, and it will be up here. We'll send the link right there. And we're doing a pen holder in that one. Okay. This a pen is holder. Yeah. You weren't there, right? No. Okay. That'll be exciting. So it's going to be a good show. <laughs> so check that out if you want to see it, and. What else do we want? Oh, we have our, is our spider? It, it is done. I mean, our, our uh, arachnid, arachnid guy. guy. I think it's ready. It's very tight in here. Uh, I'm at a weird position. There it goes. It's OK. We'll watch you struggle. Yeah. Here it is. I enjoy it. You set it up. There we go. Just like that. Awesome. <laughs> and what would you do? Well, you did this as a, as a test on wood, right? Yeah, this would be my prototype, or else I could rock the wood if I wanted to. Um, but I like how this turned out. Right. Uh, I would probably do this in some sort of red acrylic, maybe red mirrored acrylic, and be done with it. Very nice. So Again, you want to, if, you, if you're doing this for uh, children, you might want less space. Yeah, in maybe between. add a spider web behind it. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Like keep their fingies out of there. <laughs> and uh, so I just wanted to say that in two weeks, we will be at Maker Fair. It's coming up. Yeah. Very exciting. Where's Maker Fair going to be? San Francisco. San Francisco, the best, right? It is the best Maker Fair, I think. I haven't been to a New York one, but this is the best one I've ever been to. They have giant Tesla coils that mm -hmm. make EDM music. It's crazy. And it's in San Francisco, a great city. Yeah, it is fun. Um, so please, in two weeks, if you're in the area or you want to check us out, do so. Please come in, see us demonstrating. You guys going to bring uh, any machines or anything with you this time? We're bringing machines, lots of samples, lots of give outs. Very good. Uh, we're going to have some carnival-esque games. So. so that's all very secret right now. Yeah, yeah. We'll do some sneak, sneak freaks, freaks uh, sneak peeks coming up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what a freak is. Me either. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think, what, question? One more question. All right. Uh, any specific type of acrylic paint? Acrylic paint? No, no specific. Um, acrylic paint in general, it's going to be water-based and washed right off with a water cloth. Uh, usually I doubt like a paper towel and water and just wash it Yeah, you don't off. even use brushes half the time when you use it. No, I honestly, I get like kindergarten with it and I and stick finger. my fingers <laughs> and then just well that wipe make it you off. get you make sure you get into all the crevices and stuff that yeah. way, so you could use a paintbrush but typically I put them down and then they end up drying and ruining the brushes so or just a paper towel in general um, your other second best tool right the paper towels yes <laughs> uh, so happy Cinco de Mayo right happy fourth may the fourth, may the fourth be with you may the fourth be with you and uh, check us out Wednesday for Laser Talk and watch all our In the Cuts where we do live cuts, live engravings. And those are interesting because I literally just set those up and hit play. Like we've never tested them out. So uh, it's sort um, of an experimental time. Yeah. And That's fun. something could go wrong. I, it could be the wrong power setting because of me. And so even experts like you are always learning new things with their laser cutter. So yeah. Uh, always, always. I've famously said now that uh, you have to be bad at something for a while until you're good at it. That's right. So, may the fourth be with you, and until next time. Keep making.